Hi, I'm Tom Chilton. And I'm Chris Earhut. We're here to talk to you about Death Knights. You know, going all the way back to some of the earliest rumblings of the community talking about how there might be a character class in Wrath of the Lich King. Um, and a lot of that came uh, from our decision with Burning Crusade to not have a character class, right? We wanted to make sure that we weren't going to flood the game with classes that would then water everything down. And so we had that strategic choice that we made with the first expansion mm -hmm. to sort of set the table that there might not be a class with every expansion right. since we knew we kind of had to space them out. But by the time we got to Wrath of the Lich King, we, we sort of knew this was the time, time to do it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, also like uh, Death Knights in particular, you know, being so iconic to the lore, being so iconic to everything about Northrend, mm -hmm. kind of seems like Death Knights have now, to be. Now or never, yeah. right? And uh, so much of Wrath of the Lich King was about Arthas and his story. So Death Knights just being centerpiece to that, it's centered with Arthas to better tell his story. They're the yep. perfect class at the perfect time. Yep, yep. In interestingly, remember we had that uh, rune, rune Master class, right? right? It was the potential 10th class right. that, that had been tinkered with before WoW ever came out. Yeah, and yeah, we pulled some of their ideas about runes. They went uh -huh. into the Rune Blade, went to the runes on the ground, like Anti-Magic Zone, Anti-Magic Shell, used some of those rune type effects. Yep. Um, so we drew from them, we drew from the, the Death Knight unit in Warcraft 3, like Death Coil yep. and, and their Unholy uh, Aura. And we do also from Necromancers. That was part of concentrated coolness, right? right? Exactly. You know, that exactly. Was a, it's a design value that that we've always had at, at Blizzard, um, as far as trying to ensure that you know it comes back to not watering down right. the classes as unique right? as possible. Everything's right. got to be as unique as possible and feel really distinct. And yeah. then we also need Death Knights to feel very different from the other heavy plate magical classes. They couldn't feel like paladins, even right. though they're kind of anti-paladin. Arthas is a fallen paladin. They've got to have their own unique, distinct yep. stuff they do. So one of the ways we made Death Knights really unique is we gave them their own custom starting area where like you had been a fallen member of the Alliance or the Horde and captured in battle and the Lich King literally turns you into a Death Knight monster against your will and then sends you out to scourge this town. But eventually you get turned around and you turn on the Lich King and help right. fight against him and... Get your moment of redemption. Get your moment of redemption, rejoin the Alliance or the Horde as appropriate. But there's this moment where we send you back to your capital city. So you're like right. walking through Stormwind, right. but they're calling you names, they're throwing old fruit at you, you're a murderer, you're a monster, you yeah. killed my family. And and but you get that moment where you are gonna go off and fight the Lich King right. and, and redeem yourself and yeah. make up for the things you've done wrong. Because like think about it, like if if you had started a Death Knight character mm -hmm. and you were just in the Alliance or in the Horde, it'd be really like, weird. It'd be really weird. That would make no from? sense. Yeah, we're, why we're do like, we want him on <laughs> our side? What? what? Uh, aren't we here to fight these things? Or right. you know, and then even then, like if you started level one, it would also make no sense. Right. It wouldn't feel very deathy. And so, so really creating this right. starting experience around what the Death Knight is and really kind of defining the story of their uh, kind of integration into the Alliance mm -hmm. and Horde became super important. Right. We had a, a few abilities we knew we wanted to have at the beginning. We, we had announced Army of the Dead at right. a BlizzCon, so we knew we had an Army of the Dead yeah, ability, yeah. which kind of fits the raised dead Warcraft 3 ability. They've got to have Death Coil, because Death Knights had Death Coil, but Warlocks already have it. That's okay. They can have their own version of Death Coil. Um, and from there, there's a lot of, well, what else do we do? So we took things like Death and Decay from, from the, the boss in Mount Hyjal, and we, we looked at Gor Gorfine to see if he had anything. Sadly, Gorfine <laughs> didn't so have anything too much we could borrow from him, but, but we started looking at all the other places we could draw from for other ideas and inventing new stuff that we could add. I remember, though, that like some of the defining moments for Death Knight were very early on. There were a couple different things mm -hmm. that we prototyped. Um, at first, we prototyped mounted combat. Uh, where we actually made a little bit of an attempt to see if, well, what would it be like uh, if the Death Knight was riding their Death Steed during combat? But when we prototyped that, it was really kind of too hard to overcome some of the challenges of both making sure things animated in a way that mm -hmm. felt right and natural with the kind of scale of things and the way that our characters sit on mounts and right. all that kind of It's easier to believe a, a humanoid turning suddenly on a dime, but the horse turning on a dime, it kind of, you want them to have some physics to them and it yeah. doesn't feel right. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and so and ultimately those challenges really kind of pushed us to looking for what else would be really distinctive for the Death Knight. Mm -hmm. but 
but then also we had to think about, well, what does that mean for the resource system, for, right. for Death Knight to really kind of capture that distinctiveness? It would also help a lot mm -hmm. for them to have their own resource system. It ends up being a really unique system where it's almost like you have six different resource bars yeah. that are all moving yeah. up in different yeah. sequencing and order. Maybe a little much in <laughs> retrospect. <laughs> yeah, honestly, uh, in Burning Crusade and before, we had very little access to gameplay engineers to build new stuff right. for us, so we yeah. kind of went a little wild the mm -hmm. first time we could yeah. actually ask for new yeah. things. Yeah. One of the ideas that we had for the warrior with the, the right. chain. Right. The idea of a chain you'd pull and yank somebody to you. Exactly. Like, but what if we gave that to the Death Knight yep. instead of the warrior? Yep. And that turned into... There's Death Grip. There's Death Grip, exactly. But then de Death Grip to pull him to you, then created the whole foundation for how they would tank. Because yeah. Death Grip back then was also a taunt. It actually changed the way our tanks worked at that yeah. point, because then we said, well, they've got Death Grip 35 yard range. Paladin has this right. range taunt they can do. Mm -hmm. Bears and warriors needed to actually gain yeah. range. And we moved to that hole where you could now taunt something 30 yards away, which you couldn't do right. in the original game or yep. Burning Crusade. Yep. Like once we had we had that foundation mm -hmm. for Death Knight abilities between things like Death Grip, we had you know some things like Plague Strike, Unholy Strike, stuff like There's that. There's a lot of strikes. Yeah, there are a lot of strikes. <laughs> And, you know, if you look at kind of the way that, that Death Knights evolved, you know, over the course mm -hmm. of, of development, you know, mm -hmm. you then even start to get into uh, the playtests that we would have. Right. Inevitably, when we did a playtest, we wanted to have a Death Knight be in the playtest. Mm -hmm. So why don't we make the Death Knight be the tank? That always what they would say. And the idea was that we didn't have enough tanks in original classic yep. and still didn't have enough tanks in Burning Crusade. Let's yep. make sure that there are yep. plenty of tanks. Totally. There's probably still a shortage of tanks probably. these days. Cause it's more about personality <laughs> yep. than, than yep. class, but at least yep. make sure that it's not about, can I do it? It's right. more about, do I, right. you know, do I want to do it? Really kind of making that work and then also figuring out how they could bring DPS right. for people that, that wanted to kind of be right. more of a Deathy Death Knight, right. uh, right, Deathbringing right. Death Knight, I guess. Murderous rampaging, Murderous death, rampaging death, death, death Machine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, trying to kind of fulfill those across all right. three specs at the same time, and so. making them feel enough different from each other. Yeah, right, exactly. the Blood yeah. Unholy and Frosting to play different. So Frost was the dual wieldy right. spec, and uh, Unholy had more of the plagues and yeah. diseases yeah. and magical stuff, and Blood yeah. was the more brute force. I just kill things. That's right. You know, you take all those different things and you put them together, and all of a sudden it's like, wait, okay, this is this is legitimately a hero. Right. Class. This makes a lot of sense. Right. I was supposed to be in charge of balance back then. I was the balance guy. Death Knights were really we're overpowered. Kind of overpowered. Sorry. <laughs> uh, but every time I wanted to make something weaker on Death Knights, I would have all those people who love Death Knights say, no, 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 you can't nerf it. They're right. fine, they're fine, they're fine. In retrospect, it was a good place to be because it made people play Death Knights. It made people yeah. go find all those crazy ways. You know, a, a well designed class isn't obvious how you're supposed to play it. We want there right. to be emergent gameplay. Exactly. The players look at, okay, here's my abilities, here's my talents. How can I combine these to make something awesome? Yeah. We don't want to have it all dictated to them. And that's what it would have taken to make it perfectly balanced. Exactly. So we let exactly. them play with it. And then each patch of the expansion, we had to nerf them a little bit more and a little bit more. But by 335, they that's were in right. a good place. For sure. And 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 they've been strong for many, many years too. And so, <laughs> it's true. Yeah. It's, yeah true. it's been an awesome class. And, and hopefully people will get to re experience that all over again. Yep. All right. Well, this is awesome. I'd like to thank everybody for taking this trip down the Ebon Blade with us. And we can't wait for you to join us in the Wrath of the Lich King Classic pre patch where you'll be able to create a Death Knight, get them all leveled up and ready to go with Northrand alongside your friends.